How do you approach photographing or filming whales in their natural habitat without disturbing them? I think in any animal interaction, you do risk disturbing the animal whether that is above water animals like lions and tigers, uh, even lizards and bugs to whales. So the key is to, to move slowly, to move quietly, and ideally find those animals that don't seem to be disturbed by your presence and go back to living their lives as they were. This is, you know, it's, it's a matter of you know, moving in a way, understanding the animal's behavior and picking up on and seeing whether they are interested in you being there or not. And like people, there are some whales that do not want to be around you. They will typically just leave the area. And then there's other whales that are perfectly happy with your presence and they go about doing what they what they do and tend to ignore you. And then of course, on occasions, you also have some whales that want to interact with you, which is a really incredible experience. It's important to not do too much of that because you you do want them to go back to their regular lives but um because they are quite social animals you know mammals in some instances it, it really feels like some of them are, are benefiting from this encounter particularly when it comes to calves like when a mother humpback you know she's there she's raising her calf she's not eating for months so most of what she does is is to sleep and so you know sometimes you'll encounter a mother and a calf where the mother seems very, very comfortable around you. She'll go to sleep and the calf will come and play with you. And so play is is very important for both humans and many animals, including whales, to develop muscles, to build social skills, and to be curious and interact with the world so that they can discover what things are. And in that sense, like playing with a humpback whale calf, um, you can see that some of these mothers, they do seem to appreciate it. They'll often, when they know what you are and what you're doing and that it's safe uh, some of them will bring their calves over to you put the calf on one side on the side that is closest to you and then go down and go to sleep and so it's almost like babysitting but in general i try and have more of an observatory presence mm -hmm. where we just move quietly through the water and we, we get to see these very special moments of interaction where they go about living their lives and when photographing or filming whales what are some of the challenges that you may encounter and how can you overcome them? They are giant animals in a large, large body of water. And so finding them is, is the first challenge. There's plenty of obstacles in terms of water clarity. You might have little particles of, you know, algae blooms or jellyfish or murky conditions in the water that makes it very difficult to photograph. You're also in a, a three-dimensional environment. So, you know, holding your breath is a limiting factor if it's a, a scene that is taking place down in the depths and you need to be there to capture it and document it you're limited to your breath hold and for a whale going down you know, 20 meters not a big deal but for a human to go down there and stay down there and to do it quietly to get down photograph it and then come back up without disturbing the scenario it can be quite challenging it can move very quickly you know you have these moments that last just seconds or less and trying to figure out where to be how to capture it you know do you You zoom in do you zoom out do you shoot video do you do photo timing even things like timing your your breath hold so that if you need to go down you, you have to anticipate okay is the calf about to start drinking milk or something crazy going to happen in this moment like a dolphin is coming and turning around the whale and keeping up with them so sometimes the whales are just cruising and for them they it, they're moving very slowly but their slow is very fast for us because we're quite incapable in the water in comparison to most marine animals and aquatic species. And what kind of equipment do you use for whale photography and filmmaking? Generally, as far as equipment goes, I have long fins, which allow me to dive down deeper. I have a mask and snorkel. I usually wear a wetsuit to keep warm over long periods of time. And then I have a camera inside a case and I can have zoom capability on that. And that's pretty much what I take in the water with me. And a weight belt so that my buoyancy can be more neutral. Inside the camera housing, these days I'm using a Canon R3 uh, with a 16 to 35 millimeter lens. And uh, the housing is from a company called Nauticam. And uh, basically what it allows me to do is control 
all of the settings underwater if I need to make the photo brighter or darker, change the shutter speed, you know, zoom in, zoom out, change the ISO, white balance, swap the video. So I have full control. The downside is that it is very big, very heavy, and it's almost as if I'm dragging another person through the water. Sometimes it's that balance of, do I bring the camera and the scene happens too quickly and I haven't gotten there in time, or do I go and experience it with my eyes? And finally, what role do you think photography and filmmaking can play in raising awareness about whales and their conservation? I think photography and filmmaking have played a huge role in helping people fall in love with wildlife, nature, and animals. These are animals that are very inaccessible for the most part. Not everybody has the time money and opportunity to go out and come face to face with a whale and um, capturing these photos and videos allows you to share that with people who aren't able to be in that scenario and the hope is that you know when you care about something and you love it you can also think about protecting it and i think this has has been true for for many species of animals from pandas to whales and even our earth the photos from the um the apollo missions particularly the earth rise photo of the earth rising up from behind the moon uh, really helped kickstart the environmental movement and so that's one of the objectives of these photos and videos is to tell the story of the these animals and share with people that their lives are complex, they are intelligent, they are caring, they are emotional creatures, they are not just beasts to be you know, discarded or hunted or to be left out of the bigger picture of how we navigate this world.